After our previous Nintendo Switch 2 video, where I talked about the potential performance gains, I've got 8 more leaks to talk about, from the display technology all the way down to some price leaks. So let's start off with the display itself. With a current Switch, we started off with an LCD panel, and then we ended up with a much improved OLED display. Therefore, you would assume that a Switch 2 would follow up from the Switch OLED and feature an OLED display. Well, some of you might be aware that back in May, Bloomberg released a report hinting at the Switch 2 actually using an LCD panel instead. This was further backed by Video Games Chronicle, who reported that two of their sources have also heard of an LCD display. On top of this, Nate the Hate, who's been reporting on a lot of Switch 2 details, claims to have also heard of an LCD display one that is also 8 inches in size. This would of course be a good upgrade over the current 7-inch display on the Switch OLED, and would top even the Steam Deck OLED and the ROG Ally. The good news, however, is that according to South Korean news outlet Chosun Biz, Nintendo has actually been in talks with Samsung recently to supply OLED panels for the next generation Switch. Which would mean two things. We would either only get the OLED model, or we would somehow get both and Nintendo would end up selling the OLED version at a premium, similar to what they're already doing now. And I would definitely put my money on Nintendo selling two versions here, one LCD and one OLED. In fact, according to a new leak coming from leaker Soldier Delta, who accurately leaked Rise of the Ronin, uh, there will indeed be two versions of the Switch. However, instead of these being an LCD and an OLED model, he claims that one of them will be a digital-only version, while the other will be a standard model, likely with cartridge support. This is very interesting, as realistically, all modern consoles are moving towards digital-only versions. Which makes me think that there are two reasons why Nintendo would indeed consider cartridges for the Switch 2. It is either that games will be released both digitally and physically, like they are now, or that the cartridge slot will only be there for backwards compatibility with Switch 1 games. And personally, I think that it will only be there for backwards compatibility purposes. And the reason why I'm saying this is simply speed. You see, in Digital Foundry's comprehensive report about the Switch 2's presumed chip, they reported that the T239 does indeed have the ability to decompress assets onto the storage and memory extremely fast thus potentially enabling the type of loading speeds that we have on current-gen consoles. Of course, in order to do that, we would also need a much faster storage solution on the Switch 2. The current Switch uses eMMC storage, which is said to be around 300 megabytes per second, a far cry from the PS5's 5500 megabytes per second, or even a modern phones's, like the S23 Ultras, which reaches speeds of around 1700 megabytes per second read. So all that Nintendo needs to do here is use a more modern storage solution, like the UFS 4 that the S23 Ultra uses, or even the older UFS 3.1, which can still reach fairly fast speeds of around 800 to 1000 megabytes per second. This would indeed give us much faster loading times, it would also allow Nintendo to use higher resolution assets in their games, and possibly even allow them to make games that they just couldn't do before. After all, Nintendo did claim that with new versions of their consoles, they're always trying to do things that were just not possible before. Of course, such speeds are just not possible on cartridges, but if they use them only for backwards compatibility, that will still be fine. I would love to hear how many of you buy digital games compared to physical games. For me, it's digital games only. Speaking of backwards compatibility, how likely is it that we are going to see this? Well, we haven't really had any recent leaks on this, however, I do want to reiterate on some of the past ones that do give us some hints at potential backwards compatibility. First of all, Nintendo President did say back in June that they do plan on making a smooth transition to the next-gen Switch by using the Nintendo account. And in October, Nintendo US President Doug Bowser stated that while each prior Nintendo console required users to create a new account, the Switch's Nintendo accounts are indeed to be a long-term thing. And honestly, I would be very surprised if we don't actually get backwards compatibility with the Switch 2. All current-gen consoles support backwards compatibility. The PS5 lets you play PS4 games, while the Xbox Series S and X 
lets you play not only Xbox One games, but 360 and original Xbox games too. In fact, even Nintendo does support previous gen games through Nintendo Switch Online, where you can play Nintendo 64 games, Game Boy Advance games, as well as NES, SNES, and Game Boy games. So I feel like Nintendo will at least give us some sort of emulation option like they're doing now. But considering what Nintendo has stated and uh, previous leaks like the Switch 2 running Breath of the Wild in 4K60, I think it's pretty much a no-brainer that backwards compatibility will be happening. Speaking of games, Leaker Zippo gives us some hints at two of the Switch 2's biggest titles. One of them is Mario Kart 9. Pretty much a no-brainer, especially considering how successful Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has been on the Switch. However, this one isn't set to launch until 2025, but it is set to be one of the most expensive Switch games that Nintendo has ever made. The second game is said to be a brand new 3D Mario, with a massive focus on graphics. This is apparently Nintendo's highest priority, which tells me that the performance improvements will indeed be significant. According to Zippo, this 3D Mario game will launch alongside the new Switch which is what they've done back in 2017 with the launch of the original Switch and Super Mario Odyssey. Personally, I'm definitely more excited about the new 3D Mario than Mario Kart. Like, Mario Kart is fun when you play it with your friends in local co-op, but aside from that, I've never really found myself playing it on my own. Super Mario Odyssey, on the other hand, was super enjoyable. I loved the incredible creativity and just how unexpected each new location was. This was definitely one of my most fun games that I've ever played and I cannot wait for the next one. Speaking of the next one, there are a couple of more leaks on the release date. The general expected date was indeed said to be 2024, but now we have a couple of fresh new leaks on it. More specifically, Japanese game developer Level 5 shared some news about one of their upcoming games, Fantasy Life I, which they've delayed to summer of 2024 without giving a specific date in mind. And the reason for this apparently being for strategic reasons. So it could be that they want it to be one of the launch titles for the Switch 2 and that they are waiting for Nintendo to confirm an actual release date before they can announce their own. And in terms of the actual release date, Soldier Delta claims a September 24th release for the Switch 2. Now, apparently there is also an early November date planned as well, but if we are to go by what developer Level 5 stated, September would technically fall into the astronomical summer in 2024. So that is definitely looking more likely. And lastly, I want to talk about the price. So in this same report, Leaker Soldier Delta estimated the price of $400 for the digital only version and then $450 for the Cartridge Plus digital version of the Switch 2. And these prices do sound about right to me. The Switch OLED retails for $350. So a $50 increase for the Switch 2 does seem quite believable. And then a $100 increase for the cartridge version, which could also have that upgraded OLED display. A $50 price difference is also what we have right now between the standard Switch and the Switch OLED. The OLED, of course, does have that upgraded display, but it also comes with way more than that, such as a better stand, better speakers, and an improved dock as well. So I do see Nintendo potentially having these pricing options for the Switch 2. Also, since the year is almost coming to an end, I want to thank you all for the incredible support and feedback that you've given us with our app, Wallpapers. Based on your feedback, we've made a ton of improvements. From doubling our pack output to 34 packs in total and counting, to adding 8K downloads, and the ability to now use your favorite wallpapers on your tablet and desktop too. You guys have helped us make wallpapers better and better. In December, so far, we've had eight stunning new packs, such as Stormy Swirls, Pastel Pastures, Wild Wonders, Arctic Adventures, Frosty Facades, Dazzling Discs, Gorgeous Gifts, Mineral Meadows, and of course, we still have two new packs launching this Friday too. So as a big thank you, here are 10 coupon codes that you guys can use to get six months unlimited access to all of these stunning wallpapers. All in all, I'm definitely looking forward to the Switch too. The Switch is pretty much what I always take with me on the road. It's the perfect device to use on a plane or a train, especially since I have no internet connection there, so it's great to pass the time. And with more performance, more AAA titles, and backwards compatibility, I feel like I'm going to use the Switch even more at home than now, which is where I usually gravitate towards my PS5 instead. But let me know, what do you guys think? Do you plan on upgrading to the Switch 2 based on what we know so far, or are you just happy with your current Switch? I'm Daniel, this means Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.